Hi everyone, it's Nicole Steele of The Joyful Stamper, and I'm coming to you today not live. The reason being is my brother and my little niece, my adorable, sweet, cute little niece, are coming into town today, and so I won't be able to do um, my regular live at 2 o'clock, but I recorded one ahead of time for you. I did not forget about you guys. So these are the projects we are going to make for our live stamping class this week. I call it the happy half hour because it runs roughly about a half hour. So this card is a thinking of you card. I was recently challenged to make some cards for people that just, they're not going to get better, but you still want to let them know that you're praying for them, you're thinking of them, you're there to help them. So I came up with this and then this I saw, it's a fun size little candy box. I hold a monthly class at the Swickley Public Library and I'm always looking for cute little treat holders so I can leave something at their spot as a thank you for taking the class with me. So this is what is going to be sitting at their spot for March's class and if you're in the Pittsburgh area you are always welcome to join us there at the Swickley Public Library. So we're gonna start off with this candy, this fun size candy box. Okay so Highland Heather is the color that we are starting with and we're gonna do some scoring here. So I have a scoreboard and our measurements that we're going to score at, it's, this is eight and a half and this is three and a half inches. And just so you know, I always post a project sheet with the measurements and the supplies, both in the description to this video and on my blog. So you don't have to worry about writing this down. I already did it for you. So we're gonna score this at half an inch and at one and three quarters of an inch and two and three quarters of an inch, four inches and five inches. And that's all the scoring we need to do. So I can put aside my scoring board. Got to keep the bone folder around though because we're going to have to, to fold this. Next, I'm going to get out some pieces of Pleased as Punch designer series paper. Now I featured this in last week's Facebook Live so you can go back and look at those projects because they're super, super cute. But this piece um, is two inches by three and a quarter inch. This one is one inch by three and a quarter inch, and this one is three quarters of an inch by three and a quarter inch. And I'm gonna glue this to the top there. So let me get some multi-purpose liquid glue. And we're just gonna put some little dabs there. Now, of course, you don't have to make this as an Easter treat. You could do it as, um, it would be great for maybe a bridal shower or a baby shower, the favors for each of the guests, maybe for birthday parties. Um, i trying to think, uh, I don't know, just anything really. You know, you have a Thanksgiving dinner. I know it's really far in advance, but you could have that at your table setting too. So I've, I've put the largest DSP piece at the top there. And now what I'm going to do is flip this over, I'm flipping that over. And these pieces are going to go here, or excuse me, there. right there and right there. Actually reverse these. Okay, just like that. All right, now what you have to remember is these are going to be going upside down when you're working with them. The reason being is that when you fold this up, they're gonna fold upright. So if you can see in this example here, this is at the top here and when I folded it, when you fold it back up, that makes it it's upright in that position. So initially, we are going to glue these upside down. Okay, so let, let me put this piece down here. And that's going to go right there. And you know what? Something looks off about this. Let me see if I, let me get out my scoreboard here. See if I can do it. See this again. Three and a half. Let's see. Half an inch. One and three quarters. Two and three quarters. Four inches and five inches. Okay. Yep. It's all good. It's all good. It wasn't looking right for some reason. 
but it's gonna work out just fine. Or they say measure once, measure twice, cut once, right? Okay. For some reason, these pieces are not matching upright. Let me look at my template. Okay, that's why. We're putting them like that. There we go. This one's going to go there. And this one is going to go right there. Okay, there we go. This is making sense. Sorry about that. <laughs> I was getting a little confused there for a minute. So let's do this again. You have the largest DSP piece at the top there, and then you flip it over, and you're gonna put the other two pieces of pattern paper right down there. So you have a scored section there, a scored section there, this is a scored section, this is a scored section, this is, and then you have the largest one. So, and we are gonna stamp this part, but actually I need to flip it because remember, that's upside down. So, let me ink up, and I'm using this greeting from Timeless Tulips. Happy Easter, happy spring, happy, happy everything. And I'm gonna stamp it on this larger piece right here, right in the middle, just like that. Okay, and I'm using Memento Tuxedo Black ink for this. And now we're gonna run some tear and tape on these bottom two score pieces there. Now the reason we're gonna use tear and tape is because we want, we're making a 3D project here, and so we need the hold to be super strong. And when you need something to really stay together, you're going to use tear and tape. Now we're going to use the bone folder to score, get a crisp crease on all of our pieces here. Now anytime I first make a 3D project like this, I take some scratch paper and I make myself a little template. That way, if I mess up, it's not with my good paper. You know, the money, the paper that you pay a little bit of extra money for. The nice stuff. Okay, so we've got a nice little crisp crease there, and we're gonna peel the liner off of this. And this tear and tape is gonna hold this puppy together really good. And now what we're going to do is, so do you see now why we score or put those pieces on the opposite sides? So we have that one there and we flipped it over and we did this one. And remember, we did them upside down. Now for this pattern, that didn't matter. It didn't have a right or an up or a down, but if you were using a pattern where it mattered which direction it went, you'd want to glue them upside down, pointing downwards. So then you put the tear and tape on it, and when you flip it over and you start folding it, you'll see why. See how that comes up like that? It's upside down, but when we fold it, it's coming up. So now we're gonna fold it like this. I scored it ahead of time so that it would be easier to do this. And I'm going to push this down just into there like that, and I'm gonna push this side down just like that. And once you have it where you want it, then you can really stick it down because if you try to fix it after you've done this, the tear and tape is going to tear your paper. No question about it. So there we go. We've got the box formed. Wasn't That was easy. Aside from my initial confusion because it had been a few days <laughs> since I'd made this, this actually is a really easy project. I made seven of these already and once I got into the groove, it was flowing really nice, really nice and it went super fast. So I'm going to use Highland Heather ink, and I'm going to use, um, I think it was Pear Pizzazz that I was using, let me check my notes. Yes, Pear Pizzazz ink. Those are the two colors we're gonna use to stamp the tulip and the leaf. And we're gonna do that on Whisper White cardstock. So open up Pear Pizzazz, and I'm gonna open up Highland Heather. And I'm gonna stamp two of each. So I will have two tulips and two leaves. So there's the first tulip. And here's the second one. Don't you love this purple? It's so pretty and it's so spring. It's the end of February and outside, I just took my dog outside, didn't even have to wear a coat. 
It was so nice out. And I noticed the trees are budding. Oh, that one didn't come out so good. The trees are budding. And I even saw some daffodils coming up. Now we're gonna punch this out with the tool at Builder Punch. Let me go grab my punch. Forgot to bring that over. Okay, here we go. But yeah, I noticed the daffodils coming up. So I'm actually hoping that um, we don't get a frost that comes in and kills all of that because I don't know, it's kind of nice though. I left the Y this morning at about 5 a.m. No, 6.30. 6.30 in the morning, I left the Y to come home. And I noticed uh, it smelled like spring. Did you ever notice that? When it's early spring, the air just has a certain smell to it. It smells fresh. It smells clean, like, like new soil. Maybe that's what it is. It smells like new soil. But when I was a kid, that used to get me so excited because what it meant was... It was approaching the end of the school year. And of course, as a kid, that made me very, very happy. So now we have our two tulips and our two leaves that we punched out with our Tulip Builder Punch. And this punch and this set are bundled together. You can get them separately, but if you buy them together, Stampin' Up! will discount at 10% for you. And this punches out this largest tulip and this leaf here, or you can use designer series paper and make some patterned paper tulips. That would be really pretty too. Now we're going to use multi-purpose liquid glue to adhere them to our candy box. So we'll do the first tulip there. And we have the second tulip like that. And we're going to put this leaf on right there. And then we have the second leaf. Um, we'll put it like that. There we go. Now all we have left to do is add a little bow with our um, linen thread. I was looking for my glue dots there because that's what I'm going to use to adhere this. I love linen thread. I always keep several spools on hand because I go through so much of it. It's one of those things where I'm looking at a card and I'm going, it needs something. It needs something else. What does it need? And invariably, I reach for linen thread. It's just, it's a nice neutral color. It has a little bit of um, texture to it, which just, I don't know, just makes it more interesting. And I just, it goes with everything, absolutely everything. And we're gonna stick it right down in the middle like that. And then I'm going to snip the ends of it there. Okay, and there we have the candy box. It is so simple to make a bunch of these. It truly is. So just ignore <laughs> a little bit of confusion I had at the beginning there. I promise I have all the measurements right on my project sheet. Um, that's on my blog so you will be able to do these but try it first with scratch paper like I did make yourself a template so you can orient yourself about the direction that things go so that is project number one all right and I just want to remind you that if you place a $35 or minimum order by this Friday at midnight I will send you the project kits to make both the fun size candy box we just did and this card here. Now this particular card, I did this one in Grapefruit Grove, but the one I'm going to make for you today, I changed it up and I used Lovely Lipstick. So if you place an order and you get the project kit, you'll find that um, you may get a different pattern of paper within the Lily Impressions pack or a different color of ribbon, but it's all going to go together and it's all going to look really good. The other thing I used to is I used Lily Pad Lake. This is a stamp set that's in our annual catalog, and I feel like the annual catalog, once the holiday catalog comes out and the occasions catalog, it just doesn't get enough love. And this is a really, really great set. I bought it because I liked this stamp right here, and I wanted to be able to color these images. So we are actually going to use... Is this a flamingo? We're gonna stamp the flamingo today and we're gonna use a blender pen to color it in. So let's get started. Well, let me close these ink pads first. Nothing worse than making a project and then at the very end, getting a stray mark of ink on it. And it's not even the color you used on the project. So we are gonna start with a five and a half 
by eight and a half piece of pretty peacock cardstock and I scored it down the middle at four and a quarter inches and I'm going to fold it now for anybody new to stamping let me give you a tip if you can see this when you score the middle of the cardstock there's like a little bump on one side we call that the mountain because it pushes out and there's an indentation on the other side and we call that the valley because it pushes in when I fold my cardstock I fold it so that the bump that's sticking out or the mountain side is on the inside of my card it isn't going to ruin your card if you do it the other way it just makes for a nicer presentation and it's just like an extra extra little touch that you put into your projects to make them look that much nicer that's all so this is the Lily Impressions um, designer series paper and it's a free item in the celebration catalog and what I like about it is the one side of the paper has this painted Monet look and the opposite side is a painted solid color but you could see the the brush strokes of it so there's a lot of versatility with this and I chose to combine them because we're gonna mat the two pieces together just like that so I'm going to add some multi-purpose liquid glue to the back of this. And I'm going to glue it right to the middle of this pretty peacock card base, just like that. And you can see that any pattern actually would work. You can take the solid side of one and use a matte coordinating pattern from that same pack. So this case it was Grapefruit Grove, this case I'm using Lovely Lipstick. So your project kit is going to include one of these and your card's going to look really pretty. So that's what's nice about this is you can make multiples of the same card and have them in your stash so that when you need to send out a card, you're ready. You don't have to sit down and create anything. You've got a handmade card all ready to go. Now I used the Painted Labels die set and this set, this die set actually is part of the Peaceful Poppy Suite. But these shapes are so versatile. You don't need to limit yourself to using them with just the Painted Poppies stamp set. I'm using them with the Lily Pad Lake one. So I die cut this stitch swirl shape in Pretty Peacock ink and I'm gonna glue that to my card with multi-purpose glue. Not dimensionals. Dimensionals are a favorite of mine, but I didn't want this card to get too puffy and too high, so using liquid glue for this. Now I cut out also for with um, the, if this label die is from the Painted Labels die set. I cut out two pieces, one in Whisper White, one in Lovely Lipstick. The one in Lovely Lipstick I'm going to cut in half lengthwise, right down the middle. You don't have to worry about this being straight because the cut part is going to be hidden. And what we're going to do is glue the white, the white label on top of the lovely lipstick one just like that. So the lovely lipstick portion is going to be just peeking out. And I'm going to run a little line of multi-purpose liquid glue there and I'm going to lay that down just like this. And then I'm going to run a line of liquid glue on the other half of that label and I'm going to put the top half down. So I'm going to donate platelets this afternoon, and I do that every month, and I didn't drink enough water. So I'm a little nervous that the donation process <laughs> might take longer because of that. Um, I'm really bad about drinking water. I'm really bad about drinking anything. Water's really what I, only, I always drink except for green tea and I just didn't fill up this morning so but otherwise it's a really relaxing experience I get a chance to sit there and, and read for a couple hours and I love to read absolutely love it so I take a couple good books with me sometimes I'll take a crossword puzzle book and I donate from my left arm so that I can write with my my right arm and I have Spotify so I put bring my headphones and I can listen to music and it's actually a pretty relaxing experience and it just feels really good knowing that I'm helping somebody that is really quite ill and needs my platelets so it's a gift it's a blessing to be able to donate so I have this um, flamingo right a flamingo yes 
and I cut and colored one ahead of time but I'll show you quickly how I did that so that you can see now my original card I used petal pink for my flamingo on this one I'm going to use flirty flamingo I feel like I'm saying flamingo a million times am I I don't know so all right so flirty flamingo we are going to stamp this full strength inking it up I feel like I'm running out of space here I feel like I've boxed myself into a six inch square okay now here's a trick take your blender pen and you've stamped it already you can quickly go over it in circles with your blender pen and it will fill that in for you just like that now with a blender pen you have to be careful not to go over and over and over the same spot you don't want to overwork the paper because what will happen is little pieces of it will ball up and it will pill it will start like balling up and off and it won't look very attractive so you just want to be quick with your movements and I go in circles so that I don't have any harsh coloring lines but that is such an easy trick to just stamp in a color grab your blender pen and just quickly go over it and it pulls the ink from the stamped image into and throughout that image now you could also touch the tip of your blender pen to your ink pad and you could color like that too that's also an option so now there are dyes that go with the lily pad lake set they're called lakeside dyes and there's a whole set of them I believe they cut out the flamingo I think they cut out this they cut out the sailboats and there's even one that will cut these little wavy lines of water out but I don't have those dies like I've said before I don't buy dies for every single stamp set I own and I didn't buy them for the lily pad lake set so I just took my paper snips and I went around and cut out the flamingo and it's not a big deal it really isn't you you don't need every single tool to be able to stamp and make a great project you just don't so we're creative right we're creative we can do this people we can do this with minimal supplies now I glued this on and I forgot to stamp the thinking of you and I did that in early espresso ink so this is a little ink spot cube it came with a paper pumpkin kit oh look what I did I got a smudge on it hmm well we're gonna keep going we're gonna keep going it feels like a Monday but you know what when I'm recording this it actually is a Monday but you're gonna be watching this on a Tuesday so hopefully it won't feel like a Monday when you are watching this so make sure it's the right side yep <laughs> with the way things are going I could see myself stamping this upside down right about now all right thinking of you with loving thoughts and prayers and that's an early espresso ink and uh, okay so I did that turned out okay aside from that sp smudge but we're gonna again roll with it and we're gonna use dimensionals to put our flirty flamingo flamingo on our card and I'm gonna use mini ones actually not the the regular size ones so I'm gonna put a mini one there and I'll put a mini one there and if it looks like I stamped the back of this one I did I was practicing okay and I'm gonna put my flamingo right there next up I have a spool of lovely lipstick now grapefruit grove and lovely lipstick are two of the in colors that were released in 2018 and they stick around for two years so that means this June they are going away and Stampin' Up! will come out with five new in colors but I have seen what happens when these in colors um, are about to retire people go crazy when the retirement list comes out and the cardstock and the ink refills for these colors sell out super super fast so if you love lovely lipstick or grapefruit grove or pineapple punch I'll show them to you pineapple punch or blueberry bushel or call me clover if you love any of these five in colors from 2018 I highly suggest using celebration to stock up on it now not only are you going to get free items by stocking up, but you're going to be ahead of everybody else and assure yourself that you're going to get these in colors. If you wait, there is a chance that they're going to be sold out before the end of the catalog period. 
it does happen. I've been using Stampin' Up! for 20 years, so I have seen it happen. And this tail's a little too long. There we go. All right, now the final touch on this card is I want to put some metallic pearls on it. They come in silver and they come in gold. I'm going to use the gold ones. And this is another one of those embellishments like linen thread where if I'm looking for something to add to the card and I'm just not sure what, you cannot go wrong with these metallic pearls. Gold, silver, they're going to go with something. One of, one of those goes with, every color will match with either gold or with silver. Okay, come on, there we go. And I'm going to put, I think four of these will look good. There we go. Okay. Four metallic pearls. So there we go. We have those two cards. And we have... Things are rolling all over the place. There we go. So these are our two projects for today's Happy Half Hour Not Live stamping class. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. I appreciate you putting up with my... <laughs> discombobulation <laughs> and just remember if you place an order by Friday night at midnight use this reward code right here go to shopwithnicole.stampinup.net use this reward code I will send you the supplies to make these two projects right here for free now the minimum order is $35 before shipping and tax, but if you bump it up to $50, you can add this Lily Impressions Designer Series paper to your order as your free celebration item. So think about that. Thank you for joining me. Um, Nicole Steele, thejoyfulstamper.com. You can subscribe to my YouTube channel, follow me on Facebook, or subscribe to my weekly newsletter. And I'm so thankful for all of you and for supporting my little business here on the internet. So I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful, blessed day. Bye, guys.